the first of three methods that will aid you in feeling more energetic and healthier than 99% of other people is to upgrade your diet, but not in the way that you're expecting. We know that we need to move away from the standard American diet, rich in processed foods and packed with sugar and salt, but with the avalanche of diet gurus out there, it can be incredibly difficult to know which diet is best for you. And it's crucial to get this right. Recent 2022 research suggests that transitioning from a typical Western diet to an optimal one could potentially add over a decade to a person's life. And that's just through diet, let alone all of the other strategies that we're going to go through in this video. So let's cut through the confusion now. There is no one size that fits all diet. Instead, the best one is the diet that you can stick to over the long term. But there are some fundamentals. What we're aiming for is a diet that helps you achieve a healthy weight and reduce your heart disease risk factors, such as blood pressure, blood sugar levels, and cholesterol. Let's go through the five diet fundamentals and then how best to implement them into your lifestyle. Number one is a high, lean protein diet. We've got good research from the British Medical Journal, published in 2020, showing that higher protein intakes are associated with lower, all-cause death rates. Protein is fantastic for muscle repair and to help you feel fuller for longer. And a lot of research has been performed looking at the optimal protein intake for muscle building, and it appears that the magic number that we want is 1.6 grams of protein intake per kilogram of lean body weight per day. That level seems to maximize the benefits from exercise, according to a 2018 meta-analysis. And just to finish up the protein section, it used to be thought that protein timing was crucial for muscle repair, but from the research we have today, timing doesn't appear to be that important. What's crucial is the total protein intake over a 24-hour period. The second diet fundamental is good fibre intake from whole vegetables and fruits. But there is a caveat to this. For people that have irritable bowel syndrome or other autoimmune diseases, this might not be the best strategy for them, but for otherwise healthy individuals, a high fibre intake is fantastic. Fibre helps you feel fuller for longer and reduce your overall appetite. We also know from a Cochrane review that fibre intake helps to reduce blood cholesterol levels as well as blood pressure. The third fundamental is to replace saturated fats with unsaturated fats, such as avocados, nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil, and salmon. Quoting from Cochrane again, when saturated fats are replaced with unsaturated fats, it reduces cardiovascular disease by 17%. Number four is an obvious one. We want to reduce sugar. Now sometimes online people get confused about sugar and fruit. So fruit is fantastic for us. It's very high in fiber. And from the research that we've got today, fruit intake appears to reduce heart disease. Instead, what I'm talking about here is added sugar. For example, fizzy drinks or other packaged foods. And if you want to include whole grains in your diet like I do, make sure that they are actually whole grains. For example, oats are often refined and mixed with sugar. You need to read the labels closely. And on that point, the fifth diet fundamental is to reduce salt intake. As sodium intake goes up, so too does our blood pressure. Not what we want. Approximately 80% of the sodium intake in the United States comes from restaurant and packaged food. So again, we need to be careful about the labels. When you make an active decision to lower your salt intake, your food may taste a bit bland for four to six weeks, but your taste buds can readjust and your flavor comes back. But it's easy for me to sit here and mention these diet fundamentals. What's crucial is how we implement these diet fundamentals into our lifestyle. And the trick is to start with small changes that you can stick to over the long term. For example, if you're eating white bread, switch to whole grain bread. Are you drinking Coke? Well, if so, switch to the sugar substitute option such as Diet Coke. We know from multiple studies that switching to salt substitute options can help reduce body fat percentages and weight. Most people, if they make too many changes at once, they'll stick to that new diet for one or two weeks, but then they'll crash and burn. Again, what matters is that we make long-term changes, changes that we can stick to. And if it's an option for you, I highly recommend that you work with a dietitian to implement these five diet fundamentals. And before we move on to the second method for feeling more energetic and healthier than 99% of other people, if you are struggling with your weight, despite sticking to these five diet fundamentals, there are medical options that you can consider. For example, the class of medications called GLP-1. I've been prescribing this class of medications to patients that I see in the clinic who are struggling with their weight, again despite a great diet and regular exercise, and it's been game-changing for them. 
but when discussing this option with my patients, I always let them know that any weight loss strategy will result in muscle loss as well. So we need to try and do everything we can to preserve our muscle as we're losing weight. And the best ways to do that are a high protein intake and exercise, which is the second method to help you feel healthier than 99% of other people. But we're going to go through this again, not in the way that you expect. I don't need to tell you the benefits of exercise, you'll already know this, but most people who speak about exercise online massively overcomplicate it. Instead, let's dial it back. We know we want a mixture of resistance exercise and cardiovascular exercise. But our lives are incredibly busy, so me telling you that you need to exercise for an hour or two a day probably isn't going to be that helpful to you. Instead, what I want to talk about today is exercise snacks. These are short bursts of exercise that you can fit throughout the day. For example, when I'm seeing patients at the clinic, I'll see three or four patients and then have a 15 minute paperwork break. So before I start with my paperwork, I'll do a set of sit-ups and push-ups. That's just one example of how I try and fit exercise throughout my day. And in the pinned comment, I'll link to the exercise section of Roadmap. There I talk a lot more about exercise snacks and I think it's critical that virtually everyone try and implement this strategy. The third method, before we go into a couple of bonus extras at the end of the video, is sleep. Adults who sleep less than 7 hours each night are more likely to have health problems. For example, diabetes is a disease that causes sugar to build up in your blood, a condition that can damage your blood vessels. Some studies show that getting enough good sleep can help improve your blood sugar control. We also know that sleep has a strong link to weight, so if you're not sleeping well, that can lead to unhealthy weight gain. It's a similar story for blood pressure. When we sleep, our blood pressure goes down. Therefore, having sleep problems means your blood pressure stays higher for a longer period of time. But it's not only the duration of sleep that matters, we also need to focus on the quality of sleep. Here's a few tips to maximize your sleep quality. Aim for an early dinner and after finishing, brush your teeth. That's a powerful signal that you've finished eating food for the day and it allows for proper rest and recovery while you're sleeping. Next is to stick to a regular sleep schedule. Go to bed at the same time each night and get up at the same time every morning, including on weekends. Ideally, we want to cut out alcohol. Alcohol has a significant impact on the quality of our sleep. So even though we're asleep, the quality of sleep is significantly impacted and you'll wake up not feeling nearly as rested as what you would be if you didn't have alcohol in your body. And don't forget about sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is where you have periods of time during your sleep where you're not breathing that significantly lowers your oxygen levels and increases your blood pressure. It's terrible for the body. So if you're waking up not feeling rested or have morning headaches, make sure to discuss with your doctor because there's a lot of different screening tools that can be used to figure out if you do have sleep apnea or not. And if you do, it should be treated. Overall, diet, exercise and sleep are three pillars of health that if you get right, you can be healthier and more energetic than 99% of the population. But there are three additional strategies that I want to go through to really help optimize your health. The first is blood pressure, which I've mentioned multiple times in this video. It puts extra needless strain on your blood vessels. Ideally, check your blood pressure at home and in a perfect world, it should be below 120 on 80. This aggressive target is based from the SPRINT study. That study had to be stopped early because the benefits of the lower blood pressure were so significant. Now, for older adults that I see at the clinic, we may accept slightly higher readings because we need to balance the risks first benefits. So as we get a bit older, we need to make sure that the blood pressure doesn't drop too low and cause dizziness and fainting. And hopefully, if we've got diet, exercise, and sleep correct, then the blood pressure will be absolutely fine. But if the blood pressure is still above that 120 target, that is okay. We've got fantastic medical options nowadays to help. The second extra is to get your blood cholesterol levels correct. Consistent with evidence from randomized controlled trials involving more than 2 million participants, we know that as the concentration of LDL particles in the blood goes up, so too does the risk of heart disease. And from the PISA study, we can see that even if a person has optimal values for all of their other risk factors, people can still develop blockages in their blood vessels if their LDL cholesterol levels are above 50 to 60 milligrams per deciliter. There's even a suggestion now in the literature that the optimal LDL cholesterol level appears to be the level present at birth, which is typically between 20 to 40 milligrams per deciliter. But that's an incredibly aggressive target. For me personally, I target an LDL cholesterol level of below 60 milligrams per deciliter. 
And to reach that target, in addition to diet, exercise, and sleep, I've needed to use resuvastatin 5 milligrams. But again, just because I take a medication or supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. Which leads nicely into the final section of this video, which is supplements. While most supplements on the market have little to no benefit for the body, there are some that do. For example, omega-3. In the VITAL trial, they saw an unexpectedly high 28% reduction in the risk of heart attacks for the group that took omega-3 supplements. But please remember that supplements are the icing on the cake. What really matters is diet, exercise and sleep. So in addition to omega-3 supplements, I also take microvitamin. That's to help me reach my recommended daily intakes of all of the micronutrients. It also has hyaluronic acid to help reduce skin wrinkles and TMG to improve exercise performance. But once again, just because I take a supplement does not mean that you should as well. And in this video, I mentioned how I take resuvastatin to lower my LDL cholesterol levels. So make sure to check out this next video here that explains all of the research and different medical options to lower your cholesterol.